Well, that was a pretty energetic start to a teletown hall. Um, thanks for providing that video. Um, makes us very excited about the future of our auto show. Um, to everyone who's with us today, welcome to a teletown hall featuring Doug North, who is the president of North Brothers um, Ford, and he's also chairman of the North American International Auto Show. And also Rod Alberts, who's the executive director of the Detroit Auto Dealers Association and the president of the North American International Auto Show. Um, as part of the chamber's ongoing COVID-19 um, series of teletown halls, uh, today we're gonna discuss how the car buying experience has changed in the global pandemic. Um, our guests will share how car dealers across the state are ensuring the process is safe for consumers and what to expect when you're visiting the showroom or going in for service or taking your test drive in the vehicle. So we're gonna have a great conversation today. So welcome to you, Rod and Doug. So happy to have you here with us today. Um, we we're all very disappointed, obviously, about having to cancel the North American International Auto Show. Um, it was such exciting plans for this, but, and if, you know, all had been good. Right now, we'd be sitting here talking about the highlights of the show. Um, so next year, we'll do this again and be able to talk highlights. But um, can you tell us, you know, if all had gone as planned um, for June, um, what would we, as you plan for, what would be the plan for the 2021 show? And what will we see as, this, as an experience? Is it the same as what would have been 2020? Or are you just going to continue to expand on it since you've got another year? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll jump on that first, I guess, uh, Doug. But uh, just so you know, Doug is chairman of the show, and he did agree to go another year with me on this. Now, that, so he's going to be the longest-serving uh, chairman. But um, I've got a great committee, and uh, we did plan a, a wonderful show coming up uh, that we would have had in June. Uh, very disappointing, but it was the right decision at the time with uh, the TCF Center being converted to a temporary hospital and uh, safety coming first and the health of uh, the community. So, but uh, given the fact that we had expanded our footprint and we set up a, a situation where we could do more activations and engagement with uh, consumers and millennials want that these days, it's more activation oriented. So uh, we would have 14 acres outside along the river. No city in the, in the country has 14 acres next to a convention center. Right. And then we were drawn from a, a broader audience. So uh, it was gonna be a, a, a big, big, program planned and, and opportunities and more people coming in from a larger area. Uh, the fact that uh, we're moving to 2021 now, uh, we look at it this way on the positive side is that we can refine a bit more what we were doing, but we have some other plans now we can bring into the picture and create more uh, of, a, of an expanded event than we would have had before. Doug, you wanna add a few things? Well, certainly uh, Rod has, has uh, explained it well. I think that really, some of the really neat things that are really different. And he mentioned that we have 14 acres outside. We have the riverfront right there. We had great, wonderful cooperation and support from the city of Detroit, as well as the state uh, and the governor's office in, in assisting us with uh, utilizing roads, having some autonomous vehicle displays through the Michigan um, program that the governor had set up uh, to have a variety of these companies sharing autonomous vehicles. So we really had a dynamic plan that was unlike anything that's ever been done in an auto show. And really we're looking forward to doing that uh, next June. And we'll have a few changes I'm sure in place as it relates to social distancing and that kind of thing. But the, the bones of it really, I think were fantastic and we're really excited to bring it forward next year. Well, just touching on what you just said, Doug, that was a question I had, you know, as you plan for, you know, a high touch experience, but knowing that we're going forward, not knowing how long social distancing will be around, are you taking that into consideration? Oh, uh, absolutely we are. Um, we remain in close contact with a variety of, of uh, experts, governmental sources, um, and we continue to follow protocols and best practices. And as we look at, you know, redeveloping the same idea, if you will, um, we're really confident that we can, we can have our show work within the confines of sort of, at least from this point in time, what we see in the future. 
um, with our outdoor 14 acres, you know, that part, I think, right. I don't want to say it's easy, but I think it's pretty easy to kind of see what direction that would go. The, some of the questions still remain for the TCF Center, but as that's a hub of our, of our event, uh, we're really working hard with, you know, TCF officials, with city officials and state officials, as well as federal officials, just to make sure that, you know, we're in full compliance and support all of the safety protocols that at least we know of today, and we'll continue to try sure. and anticipate. Sure. What I was really excited about was uh, some of your outdoor activations around the city, especially with some of the international flair and, and a few different areas. I would think those type of gathering areas would be more difficult to manage the social distancing than inside TCF. Yeah, I think everybody has to do their part. Uh, since we we're going to open it up to the city and and the eight or nine parks that we had, you know, working with uh, with downtown, um, it, it was going to be a team effort and the community effort. So, but knowing the fact that we moved to June and it was outdoors, and the 14 acres really doubles our square footage, along with adding the city to it itself for this walking distance across town would be 15 minutes. You could be anywhere by mm -hmm. walking. Um, I think we're we were teed up for a change. Uh, not that we saw this com coming by any degree, but it, it, it showed that it really a situation now that we're not confined as much and we can right. do more with the customer and we can do more just on social distancing if needed. Let's hope uh, we don't need as much. Right. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the show and what happens at the show, we've seen several virtual vehicle unveilings, especially during the pandemic. Um, what role do you see these playing going forward into the future? And then what role will auto shows play? Will this continue this way? Um, or will you have to work to balance, you know, new virtual opportunities and still keep them at the show? I'm assuming so. So I'll, I'll kick it to you first, Rod, and then we'll hold yeah. around up. Well, you know, I think the, the, the virtual side does have its place. I mean, you're not going to avoid technology when it comes into the debut side, but you have to realize it's one dimensional too, the way debuts work. I mean, you're going to, you see it online, but in the end, I think it's a good test, uh, litmus test to, to what uh, what can be done. Um, one way or the other, you, you have to touch and feel and smell uh, everything about the product. Uh, it's a big purchase and people are buying them. I think more so now for the, the purpose of, of ownership again, uh, it's a big purchase and people want to be around the product. So I think car shows or some kind of display of product like that is always going to have its place. Uh, sure. But it'll be combined with technology in some aspect. And the virtual side's not going away. We can't get rid of technology. We want it. But by the same token, let's make it a complement to what we currently have. Doug, what do you think? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think there's a place for both. Um, certainly, uh, when you have a virtual event like that, it's a very specific product line. It's really oriented toward one segment of the buying public and that in no way replicates what you can get at a show where where uh, c consumers can look at a variety of different products across a variety of different companies and they can compare and then they can also touch and feel them which is is far different from the virtual experience so we hope to be a good complement to that right well we're going to remain excited for next year's show and we know it's going to be even better than it would have been in 2020 because You've held over Doug for another year. Thank you for signing on for another year, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's get to the discussion about the car buying experience. So, Rod, you're executive director of an association of car dealers. So what have you been hearing from your dealers about how COVID-19 has impacted them? And do you know, because I'm sure you have peers across the state or across the nation, how has Michigan dealers fared compared to other dealers across the nation. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, of course, I represent um, the Detroit dealers, which are about 200 in the region, and um, the larger, you know, volume dealers, per se. Then you got the outstate uh, dealers at another 600, but they're smaller. Everybody's got a different situation depending on their location. Uh, I think every dealer, they have to have their uh, their COVID preparation plan in place. And and I, from my standpoint and my, my discussions I've had with the dealers here, um, they're quick to want to do the right thing to protect their employees and the customers. Sure. Um, it's all individualized to the to the organization, but uh, they've all been wanting to respond the right way and listening to the governor and the direction. Now we've had a pretty uh, strict governor in some aspect uh, along the way, and and yeah. uh, we're seeing some payoff to that because we were on the low end of, of cases. But um, again, 
the economy is an important part of that. And there's a balancing act that to be done, and, and she's realizing that too. Now, nationwide, uh, the, a lot of uh, Texas and Florida and other places are really struggling. And it, uh, Doug can get into this more, but when you start looking at what dealers are going through with product and availability and all that too is another thing. But uh, I think we're positioned well, and the dealers have done a great job here. It's very professional, and I'm just glad I'm in Detroit, not somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> and so am I. I am too. Yeah. So, Doug, for you, um, last month, obviously, retail dealers entered a new phase when Governor Whitmer opened dealership showrooms. How are dealers working to return to a sense of normalcy since the reopening? And tell us what consumers visiting the dealerships expect to experience. Well, uh, I guess I would say that in our case, Virtually all of our employees couldn't be more excited to get back to work, even under these new protocols. Um, maybe it's just part of our industry or part of our business, but they were chomping at the bit to get back to work. And sales in May and June were, were really good. And, and certainly in the Ford world in Southeast Michigan, June was up year over year. So it kind of speaks to the fact that there was pent up demand and that people still want to buy cars even right. though they recognize, yeah. you know, it's kind of a new normal. And so our people have been really supportive uh, of all the new safety protocols. And, and then consumers, uh, many, um, are taking advantage of these new protocols with, you know, whether it be a touchless sale or an online sale, whatever you like to call it, where they really don't even come in, as opposed to others that still want to come in and see cars and they still want to experience the new cars, but are doing it in a way that's certainly more cautious and recognizes some of the new realities we're dealing with. But um, our team couldn't be more happy to be back working again. And it's clear that uh, consumers wanted to get out of their house. And I, I, I don't necessarily always mean just to buy a car, but I can't tell you how many people we had come in in, in mid-May to through June to even get their oil changed. And it was clear that they were just excited to get out and talk to somebody for a half an hour about something other than, you know, what are we gonna buy at the grocery store today and what are we gonna cook for dinner? So, um, you know, it's really been a, a neat experience to watch. It's it's good that people are, are, are wanting to do it, but we do have kind of a new reality in how we have to go about doing things. Right. And so I'm assuming whether it's coming in for service, test driving a vehicle or walking the showroom, um, all the safety protocols are all in place that they might expect in any other retail um, function. Yes, that's 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 accurate. And and uh, our dealership, as well as virtually all the others I know of, have been very upfront in that. Um, certainly we require masks and we recognize all the socially distant protocols. Um, we have sneeze shields set up on all the desks and customer areas, any place a customer would be. Um, we have that plexiglass and we have, of course, our daily and hourly and minute to minute cleaning protocols as it relates to the, the store and doors and, and, and all the facility, um, as well as our vehicle cleaning protocols that are all now require a, a far greater amount of um, disinfectant and various sprays and, and things that we can share with the consumer about when you get in your car, you, you, you know that um, we have taken care of every touch point and you can have confidence uh, in either picking up uh, something from service or whether it would be a new car as well. So we're certainly um, in that mode and, and everybody recognizes it and it's just part of how we do business today. So there's still more changes to come, I know. Um, we need the federal government to make one change on one document that requires what I'd call a wet signature, but DocuSign and some of the other tools oh, sure. are now uh, able to be used for when we actually sell a car. So consumers have a lot of different options now than they had previously. Oh yeah, that's really very helpful to be able to use technology. So to follow up on that, Doug, do you envision that some of the business practices that were put in place during the pandemic um, could continue after the resolution of the pandemic? I do, yes. I, I can't tell you specifically all, but it would be my belief that many of the 
uh, disinfecting processes, the cleaning processes, both from a vehicle standpoint and a facility standpoint, those will all remain. Um, I don't anticipate, um, certainly the masks, they may go away, but the sneeze shields, those kinds of things, um, I, I, I don't see those really going away, at least not anytime soon. And, uh, and we're glad to use them. I mean, it's, it's just part of how we do it, but um, you know what, we're adaptable and the consumers really seem to be as well. So uh, we don't look at that as a hardship. Um, it's just a little different way of doing business. So Doug, you mentioned earlier about um, vehicle sales and how they were up. So clearly they're showing signs of recovery with May and June sales better than expected. Um, what do you see in your crystal ball in terms of sales in the days and months months ahead? You know, that's a, that's a great question. Um, certainly we've seen a fair amount of pent up demand in these last couple of months. And uh, as we look forward to the rest of this month and the next couple, uh, inventories um, are getting a little lower and a little tighter on various product lines because of the plants having shut down for right, length right. Of time. So we'll see some shortages in some of those products. But I, and I, and I, you know, until we've got this election coming, you know, in the late fall. So, you know, it's, it's a little bit hard to say. We've got, in the Ford world, we've got this phenomenal amount of new product with our new F-Series and our three new Broncos. And so we've had a lot of, a lot of um, great excitement about that. And I'm optimistic that, that those launches will go well and, and we'll have customers for them. Uh, but I think, um, you know, the larger economy, I, you know, I'm very optimistic. There's probably a few question marks there based on our politics. Sure. But uh, I'm optimistic about this 2020 finishing out being actually ending up being a pretty good year. Oh, that's great news. Well, let me bring in my colleague. Sandy Barua, who's been monitoring questions in the chat room, and let him post some questions now. Well, Doug and Rod, thank you so much for, for joining us. A great discussion so far. I have several questions for, for you both. Uh, first of all, uh, let's start with Rod, but I'm going to direct this question to both of you. But Rod, first crack at this one. Uh, how will the 2021 auto show be impacted by by COVID. Let's assume that you're, we're going to have the 2021 show, but what's happening now? How is that going to impact how the show unfolds in 2021? Well, the first thing I think we have to be is we have a game plan and an end in mind, um, you know, getting people downtown. We're all about bringing people together. Um, so we're working with TCF Center and the city of Detroit to make sure we do all the things prepared as needed when the time comes for social distancing or anything else we have to do. But then again, we don't know what it means until we get closer. Uh, so I think the, the key to it is preparing for the worst and then when it eases up a bit and we more so get a vaccine, uh, which is what we count on at some point, life has to get a little bit more back to normal. We'll keep a little bit, but back to normal is we can move ahead and, and get people back together because I think um, people want that. Now, from the standpoint, again, as I mentioned earlier, having the city involved and using more of downtown and showing off our city and, and how it's changed over the past several years and uh, TCF Center and the improvements and, and, and the riverfront. We've got a beautiful downtown and having media come in from all over the world, we wanna make sure we do everything we can to show off our city. Uh, just like with what you do with the chamber or the bureau in town, we wanna show it off. And I think it's gonna be a better month in June than, than January. Um, I'm very glad now we changed because I think January would have been a tough time coming up to uh, put on a show. So sometimes we get a little bit lucky, <laughs> uh, but but overall we're doing everything we, we can. I think learning through the dealers and how they're dealing with their businesses and being entrepreneurs, it's helping getting their input and, and from Doug and others to make sure we do the right thing on the COVID experience and what we deal with people downtown. So unfortunately I got a committee and, and the right people in place and, and partners with TCF Center that it's not gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be as tough as you might think. And I'm counting on positive things happening and, and this thing easing up too. So I'm, it's hard to really give a direct answer to that because we don't know what June brings, but I'll tell you this, um, we'll continue to push and refine and make the show even better than it would have been this past June. 
Uh, we already got some plans in the works that we want to announce in three months. So um, expect bigger and better for June 2021. And Doug, what about you? How has this experience of 2020 and COVID impacted your thinking about the 2021 show? <clears throat> well, certainly, uh, Rod said a lot of it very well there. I think, um, you know, our, our, our view, our point of view is that we're kind of living it every day right now. And so it does, it does help us, uh, I guess, contribute in a way to conversations and developing some of these plans. Um, based on sort of what we're seeing today. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, I look at some of these uh, experiences and I see what we can do. And, you know, we have backpack sprayers and if there's opportunities that those need to be used, then we use those and, and we can disinfect cars quickly and we can disinfect areas quickly. So there's a lot of ways we can address some of these challenges right now and uh, while it's a little different in a planning standpoint, it's certainly just another piece of the puzzle that we continue to look at and, and plan for uh, based on where we're gonna be at the time. But, you know, we're optimistic. We know people love to see cars. They love to experience them. And we will do whatever is necessary to ensure that they have a safe, positive, exciting experience. So, um, Rod said it well, there's still some things we don't know, but hopefully the maybe the medicine will, will kind of move forward a little bit and it will provide a little bit of relief and then we can, you know, use good practices and safety protocols that are generally accepted to make sure the experience is really a great one for everyone. Great. Yeah, well, we're all looking forward to 20. 2021 and we you know we we're so uh, bummed that we uh, that we missed the opportunity for the inaugural outdoor June uh, uh, Detroit show. Uh, let's stay on this issue of auto shows just for a bit here. Uh, uh, Rod, I'm going to start with you, but then go to Doug again. Uh, you know the world of auto shows, uh, Rod, as you know better than just about anybody else on the planet, it has been changing dramatically even before the advent of COVID. Uh, you know, what is the future for some of these major auto shows? Uh, obviously, we feel good about what you have done with the Detroit show to pivot the Detroit show, but there's all these other big shows, you know, Paris, Geneva, for example, Tokyo. Uh, are those shows going to have to do a similar pivot or is COVID going to uh, put them on a completely different trajectory than they had been before? Uh, that's a it's a really great question. Um, you know, again, I've been here for a long time, uh, close to 30 years, and you know, I'll give you a quick history lesson. Go back to the 90s, um, our show grew rapidly during a, a good economy, and displays were huge and big investments. And then you got to in the last 15, 20 years, the efficiency factor. Well, we went through in 09. Uh, there's fewer brands out there. The world changed with a number of products. Even concept cars went away. And concept cars were a big, big part of auto shows. That was half of the debuts were concept cars and then production cars. So when you see the, the fewer product and then the pie gets smaller on, on debuts, what you really are concentrating on is you, you still have the demand for the, you know, there's still two thirds of those still debuts are out there uh, in product, but you've got to find a, another way to work with technology in, in regard to uh, presenting these products. So not getting to Frankfurt. Um, they're not even the Frankfurt Motor Show anymore. They're mu moving to Munich. Uh, they just figured they had to make a change in that regard. Paris is not having a show this year. Geneva canceled this year, four days prior. Now they're not having one in 2021. They're all going through change. Uh, fortunately, we did made our change three or four years ago. And we made the announcement a couple years ago. We were ahead of the game, even before all this came around. So I feel like we're ahead of the curve. Um, but one thing is bottom line, whether it's a regional show throughout the US, which there are 65 of those, and they're just market driven, or you're an international show that's media and market driven, if you don't change and you stay, keep doing the same thing over and over again, um, you're, it's not gonna last. Uh, you really have to adjust, and we're not talking evolve, we're talking make a dramatic change to what you do. And fortunately, knowing engagement, uh, experienced product, knowing what millennials are looking for, or trying to figure out what they're looking for at times, uh, but you doing the same thing over and over again wasn't the answer. And fortunately, 
What I love about Detroit is we have a city with a convention center downtown. We have a city you can walk around. A lot of the convention centers on the outskirts. You're in Beijing and Shanghai. They're in the outer areas of, of the of town. So we can really build a show on the on the, with the foundation of Detroit and really show it off and do things here that nobody else in the world can do. So that's our plan. Uh, we're going to play all our, our assets to our advantage, and having the dealer involvement behind it's going to make all the difference. So. Um, again, ahead of the curve with the rest of the shows, but they're, I don't care what show in the world you're talking about, they're all going to change. Doug, do you have a thought on uh, auto shows in general in terms of their uh, strength or weaknesses going forward? Well, I would certainly echo all of Rod's comments, and I, I, I just add that he mentioned it earlier, but there is not a show of any kind, really, that would have uh, the 800,000 square feet that TCF does, Park Plaza with the 14 acres, the international riverfront right there, the seven city parks all within a 10 or 15 minute walking, as well as sort of the inertia that that downtown area has right from Park Plaza if you go right up Woodward. <clears throat> and so not only do we have the best city for, for cars and car history. But we also have now all of the, the development of, of downtown Detroit and Detroit in general, the redevelopment, I should say, if you consider Corktown and some of these other areas. And to be able to leverage what Detroit represents automotively, take advantage of the footprints that we have in terms of our, our, our great assets, and then you build in all of the wonderful dining and entertainment venues. I mean, no one in the world can present a show like we're going to be able to present it in the best month of the year. It averages 70 degrees and gets dark at 945 at night. And when you, when you combine all of those things, and most importantly, the ability to have dynamic activations and interactions and ride and drives, you, you really can't find that anywhere, even if they wanted to try and create it. So we think we have something that's really unique and special, and that we think that the Detroit area and the greater Midwest are really going to embrace it. So we're really excited about it. Great. Thanks, Doug. Doug, uh, the rest of these questions, or some of these questions, are actually focused on you and uh, uh, the dealer world. Uh, uh, this first one is regarding cost structure. Uh, do you anticipate uh, your costs having to change pretty significantly that the consumer will notice to implement all of these new uh, safety protocols that you've had to implement? That's a great question. Um, I, I, I don't think immediately, no. I mean, we've not, in our particular case, not changed any prices or anything specifically. Um, now, I suppose, you know, when we look at six or eight months worth of data to try and understand what's happening. Um, we, we probably would look at it, but I don't anticipate changing it. Our business is really competitive, both from the service side and the sales side. And so I would not anticipate any significant change uh, to the consumer. Um, you know, nothing more than what would be typical, I guess, of CPI or some modest type of inflation, which does happen, but um, not not in pricing of vehicles or anything like that, no. Okay. Uh, these next two questions are about your customers, uh, Doug. Uh, first of all, uh, how uh, accepting are your customers of, you know, the social distancing guidelines, wearing a mask? Are you getting pushback from your customers or are your customers saying, hey, this is great? You know, I think on balance, most of them understand it and are complying with it. We do have a few that, that you know, uh, are either a little bit um, uh, maybe um, not interested in all aspects that we would say, but um, for the most part, people want to remain safe and are really complying really well. We haven't had any difficult customers. Uh, we've had a few that didn't want to wear masks, but once the governor changed her recent order to require it, that's made it a little bit easier on our people to talk about with a with a customer. So, 
and we have masks and gloves and all sorts of things for them if they need them. Um, but, you know, it's, uh, I won't say that it's been perfect, but it's been really pretty darn good. I can't complain at all. That's great. Well, that's a uh, that's good for everyone. That's obviously good for the buying public, and uh, just as importantly, it's good for your employees because we want to make sure that your team members are are safe as well. So that's good news. Indeed. Uh, Doug, uh, how has the consumer changed uh, during this? Uh, when they're shopping, are they looking for something different? Are they being more frugal? Are they uh, are they looking for a different kind of product than than you would anticipate? Uh, during this time of year? You know, I don't think the product so much has changed, and, I, and I'm not sure that their buying habits have. I would say that virtually all the buyers, or most buyers, um, frugal might not be the right, right word, but they're always sensitive to price, and, and it's a very competitive environment. So we haven't seen a big change there. What we have seen, which has really kind of been interesting, is um, a segment of the population um, that might be more susceptible to this this uh, this virus um, have somewhat embraced a distant buying and and distant shopping, if you will, be it online or even by phone calls or even ask, having some of our people take product out to a potential consumer's house and have them look at it. And so. Um, you know, some of the folks that I, I don't want to use age as a, a descriptor, but some that might not have necessarily been previously, you know, tuned in to online purchases now are 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 really kind of moving in that direction because they recognize that, you know, for their particular health considerations, it's probably just not a good idea to go wandering around, you know, uh, any kind of a public environment. So, and that's been that's been great. I, you know, it's, I don't want to say it's surprising, but um, I, we've, we've, we've embraced it and our people recognize it. And uh, so I think, you know, the long term is that there will be a segment, a percentage of buyers that probably just aren't going to come in again. And they'll take advantage of touchless purchases as well as our pickup and drop off and delivery service for whether it's a service or body shop or something like that. So, uh, but it's working really well, I would say. Good, I'm glad. Well, listen, uh, I'm gonna end with this, uh, Doug and Rod. Uh, one, uh, Doug, I am not surprised at all that uh, your North Brothers dealerships have taken a lead on this. Uh, you probably don't remember this, but when the Lincoln MKT uh, first came out. I know that seems like a million years ago now. Uh, and I was shopping for one and you had one on your site, uh, steel blue with the EcoBoost engine, interior fully loaded. And I called the dealerships and said, that's the one I want. And I said, can I come, can I come get it? And they said, well, you know, it's not really here right now. It's like, well, you know, Mr. North has it. And uh, you drove it down from your house uh, up north, off from vacation, uh, so I could uh, so I could buy your MKT essentially right off your back. So I've always appreciated that, Doug, uh, and all the other cars that I bought uh, at your Lincoln dealership there in Troy. So so thanks so much, uh, Doug and Rod. I'm going to turn it back over to Tammy. Thank you very much, Sandy. So um, we we are a little over, but I really would like to give either of you an opportunity for any closing remarks that we might not have touched on or that you want to re-emphasize? I'll start with you, Doug. You know, I think, I think we've touched on a lot of things. I, I would just put it out to all of uh, all the participants today that if they have any specific questions or want to know a little bit more about the specific protocols we use, they'd be welcome to contact me at the store at North Brothers Ford, and um, I'm happy to try and help or give them any more specific information. And and just to let you know, we're excited about what Ford's doing and, and we're really excited about where the show's going. So, and I'll let Rod speak to that, but um, thank you for having me today and, and let me know if I can help in the future. Thank you, Doug. Rod? Uh, yeah, first, Doug, are you taking any uh, down payments on Broncos uh, yet? Are you? <laughs> we had 64 reservations, I think, as of yesterday. You might get a few more after this call. I'm not sure. But. 
Yeah. <laughs> No, but uh, to that point, uh, you know, I've uh, you know I've been here a long time, and I've got 200 dealers that are that it was a it was a little bit of a like uh, like opening up again, as Doug would tell you, like a kid in a candy store. You know, you you've been in this business a long time, it's been in the family a long time, and here you've worked with your customers, and then you're you're actually, you're shut down, and then when you reopen, it's uh, it truly is a grand opening again, and and they're so excited to have customers. So when people in the community are looking for product, and and again. Dealers are part of their community. I just want to let everybody know they're there um, every day for for you to uh, to find that car that you you want to buy or or just go visit because everybody's looking to visit with somebody right now. Uh, for the show standpoint, again, we're proud of what the North American International Auto Show has done for the past you know 30 years. Uh, but there's time for change, and we're sure. in that midst right now. We're seeing it uh, not just in the world of the economy and the way the world works, but with the with COVID, and uh, we have to embrace that change and. I think Churchill said, uh, you know, don't waste a crisis uh, in a moment. Uh, turn, take something from it. So, um, Very true. I think we're in a good place, and we're we're going to be in a better place when things turn. But uh, thanks again for having us. Oh, so happy to have you both. You know, the chamber is always a big supporter of the show, and will always be there to be your partner. And Rod, we've known each other a lot of years. You do such a great job, and it's always been a pleasure working in partnership with you. Doug, good luck to you um, for another whole year. I know you're going to do a fabulous job, and I hope the sales just keep increasing for you. Thank um, you so much. Thanks for having me today. Welcome, Doug. For those of you who are with us today, we talked a lot about safety protocols today, and there is an important part of that, which is wearing your mask. And the more we wear our masks and protect, the sooner we can help all of our businesses get back to normal. So I urge you to go to DetroitChamber.com and take the pledge for the has, hashtag, mas, hashtag mask up Michigan. Um, and also, if you get the opportunity, take your picture with uh, your mask on, whatever design it might be, and uh, put it on social media, hashtag mask up Michigan. So with that, we'll finish today's Teletown. And thank you, Rod. Thank you, Doug. And thank you, Sandy. Everybody have a great day. Thank you.